Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark for one of the last videos of the year, hence Christmassy. But I haven't decorated my office because I'm recording a load of online training currently. So coming soon, there'll be the Advancing Analytics, Spark Fundamentals, getting started with Delta, lots and lots of training all coming up. So exciting times, but also means non-decorated office, which is all very sad. So why are we here today? Well, I want to talk about Excel. And I know, I know that's not normally what I talk about. I talk about Spark and backend stuff and all interesting things, but yeah, not today. Because I saw a load of horror on the, uh, the interwebs yesterday about sharing, Delta sharing in Excel. And I was like, oh, that's, that's an interesting use case. And a couple of people pinged me and said, hey, Simon, that'll be an interesting video. Can we have a look about what you do with that? How it work, use cases, all of that stuff. So this morning, I was like, great, I'm going to dive onto it. We're going to have a look and see how you can get Excel working with Delta sharing with this new Delta sharing add-in. So, yeah, we're going to take a look at that. Uh, we're also going to have a look at Power BI. I'm going to have a look at how you do it through a centrally managed data model for the reasons that we will come on to. Um, and, yeah, as always, if it's your first time around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know what you're currently doing with Delta sharing. Do you have any data sets that you really struggle to manage and pass around a load of different people. I mean, come on. The world still runs on Excel. Businesses still run on Excel. The world of financial services still heavily, heavily runs on Excel. So we have to make sure it's part of the ecosystem and it's very, very important that we do. So let's go and have a look what we're talking about. So this is where it kind of kicked off. This is what we saw yesterday. So Junta Nakai, big, big, big person in financial services working for Databricks going around helping financial services make the most of Spark and lake houses and essentially championing all of that good stuff. So if you're in financial services, you don't know about Junta, go and watch a load of his stuff, does a lot of tech talks and things, and he's an interesting man. So have a look at that stuff. But this is what we're talking about. So we built an Excel plugin for data sharing. That's, that's where I first went, ooh, ah, interesting. And I was having a look at a few of the different things there. Uh, you know, the nice little screenshots then just read from Delta Sharing as a plugin into Excel. Now, I did a little bit of digging. Now, this is actually, as you can see on the screenshot, a third party plugin called uh, Exponam Connect. Now, it's currently in a gated private preview, so I don't have access to it, so we can't have a play with it. Uh, and also, well, it's a third party. It's not coming from Databricks. It's not coming from Delta Lake. Uh, so I didn't really want to have a bit of a player that I wouldn't be able to say to my, uh, my end users, here, here's a connector. Go and have a look at it. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of things that does in terms of volume of data and what you can do with it and all of that stuff. But my main question was why? So yes, you cannot currently in Excel click get data and use da Delta sharing. It doesn't have the same get data um, options that you have within Power BI. Um, but you can connect to Power BI and you can do all of this stuff through Power BI. So I was looking at this going... Oh, why? And I'm pretty sure there's features and things that they've put into it, but I've not really seen it. I've not seen all of the extra stuff you can do. But I want to talk about how you achieve this in Power BI without having to install a third-party component, without having to get every single person who is working in your company who wants to work with this to install an extra thing or to roll it out by your automated IT package management. How do you just do it with the stuff that's pre-installed in a way that they can manage? Well, let's have a look. So... I've got Delta Sharing already set up. I've done a previous video about how you go and set up Delta Sharing. I'm using Unity Catalog. I've told Unity Catalog I would like to turn Delta Sharing on. Uh, and so we're just going to go through this quickly. So I'm creating a new share object called AWorks. Uh, I've got some data sat in Unity Catalog already. I've just got some AdventureWorks data. I want to share customer lists, product list, and fact sales. So I'll allow people to do some quick chop and changing. What kind of customers are buying what kind of products? They can use that analysis. Now, that's not really the example we're talking about in the LinkedIn example, which is more about, you know, sharing trading data and giving people access to market data and doing all that kind of uh, interesting stuff. But I thought it'd be interesting to take something that is, one, trying to use measures and calculate stuff, and two, relating several tables together. That, for me, is an interesting use case of something we can share out. That's what we're starting with. So I'm adding three different tables to my share. Going to quite loosely done in a quite basic way. Uh, I'm creating myself a recipient. So I'm going to go create that. We can get my token. I can go and use that in just a second. 
I'm granting myself access to those tables I've just added in that AWORK thing. And then I'm just doing a quick test to make sure I can go and access it so I can't go and do them. So that's that's a lightning quick basics of giving someone access in Delta sharing. So I can pop that in, I get a credential file, and that's downloaded down at the bottom of my screen. It makes that easier for you guys to see. Here we go. Um, and then, yeah, I've got that little file downloaded. So I can open that file. That gives me some stuff. And then I can start working. So number two, we're going to go to Power BI. Let's see how often I open Power BI. It's not even in my shortcuts. Uh, so we're going to go to Power BI. I'm going to use get data. So I want to get data. We're going to wait until get data comes up. And I'm going to choose Delta sharing as our thing. So I want to go to Delta sharing. Going to connect. It's going to be a little bit confused because I've used the same point before. So it's probably going to skip the bearer token and then tell me that I don't have access. But let's go and have a look and say, OK, I've got access. Let me work. And then, yeah, so it wants my bearer token, which is in here. So that in itself is nice and easy. It'd be nicer if I could just actually just store these credential files somewhere and have the plugin go and work on top of that, but is what it is. Okay. So first thing achieved, I've now got my three uh, tables. I would like to have those three tables, please. I'd like to load those tables. I could put it into Power Query and do some transformations and all that, but easy enough to grab data and put it into a Power BI model. Okay, so switching over to Power BI. This is when the various Power BI people that I know laugh at my ineptitude in Power BI, but it's fine, back-end person. Okay, so we can go and have a look. We've got tables of data. It automatically inferred the relationships of those tables. So we can see customer ID has been linked down to customer ID on that side. We've got product ID going down to product ID on that side. And it automatically created a load of measures for us on top of line total, order quantity, and that kind of thing. So that is a model that is there, happy, running, ready to go. So the first thing I wanted to do was just have a play with this, but I found that this didn't necessarily work immediately. Uh, what I had to do is create some automatic measures. And let me show you what I mean by that. So let's go, let's just publish this up to my workspace. Yes, I want to save this. This is my Delta share. I'm going to save that. I'm going to deploy it to my workspace because I'm being lazy. Again, every Power BI person is judging me here. Don't care. It's just to get these tables up into Power BI and then we can start working with it. Okay. So we've deployed a data set. We now have a data set. We have now have, we could build a new report and go into my data hub and I can see I've got Delta share as a data model with my various tables in here. So I have successfully deployed a data set to Power BI that is using Delta sharing and can go and actually access that data. Now straight from here, I can click Analyze in Excel. I can say, go to Excel, open this up to the pivot table. It's using my Delta sharing connection and I've got my pivot table set up here. Now, this is not great because I can go to like line total, but that's not a measure. So I can't actually use that to go and analyze. I can't treat it as if it was numerical data. So I could get, you know, my list of customer names, my list of product names, but it's not really using the relationship between them. And then bringing this values in is not actually doing it. So that model doesn't quite work just on that import. So it's, it's not, not, not amazing, honestly. Um, whereas if we go back to Power BI, essentially all I need to do is create a measure on top of the thing I want to add up. So we create a new measure. And that measure we can just make really, really easy. Call it whatever we want. My measure equals, we call it sum. I'm going to do a sum of exactly what we're doing, that line total. There we go. The most basic measure known to man. I'm going to call it measure. I'm going to call it my you know, total sales. And there we go. So I've now created a measure called total sales based on that figure I just wanted to uh, to add up. I'm going to save that up and publish it. Send the model up to that data set. And that's, that's all I needed to do. It's just slightly annoying that I had to do something to get it to work. But I'm now going to have a data set that is published that has that measure built inside it. So we come in here and do a quick refresh. Okay, we should actually now see we're going to have that total sales you guys can't see it, but just bring that in. The total sales is now deployed as a, as a measure that I can use. So again, if I use this in my Analyze in Excel, I'm going to open up in Excel for web, just being lazy. Yes, I know, macros are naughty. And then I can come in here, and I've now got total sales. So that'll work as part of my measure. I can see that's working quite happily. Oop. 
Not if I scroll like that. There we go. And then I can bring in customer name. I can bring in by product. I can do any kind of analysis I would normally do. I can see by customer, you know, what, what products are is each customer actually sort of going to buy so I can get that breakdown. Again, whatever, whatever data I'm doing, I can now analyze it properly now that I've created a measure. And that's it. That's the overhead, the work to make this data set available for all of my Excel users is one, create a, a data set pointing at the Delta sharing and configuring that bearer token, hitting publish, and then adding some measures if I need some measures. And that will work on any data set size that we actually want in there. We can set default, so it'll only go to a certain size, but that's it's not, not particularly difficult. So let's do in local Excel. That was Excel for web, sure. Who actually uses Excel for web to do real work? I don't know. So let's go and have a look at local Excel. So here I'd be in here, I'd be saying get data. Now I'd love it if I had get data from Delta sharing just in here and it worked the same way, we don't. So what I have to do is say get data from Power BI. That's gonna refresh, gonna show me my Power BI data sets. I know that in here, I do have my Delta share. I wanna pop a pivot table in from there. And now I can do exactly the same analysis. So, yeah, that's it. So I don't get it. I don't get the, yeah, this is great. We have a, an separate Excel custom add-in that we can get to plug Delta sharing into Excel to go specifically so each person has to configure their own connection. Um, yes, this is assuming we're setting up one recipient for Delta sharing and then we're managing another security layer on top of it to decide who gets that data. So the security model's changed, absolutely. Yes, we need the overhead of someone having some kind of admin access. We need someone to have created that Power BI data set to have managed uh, that Power BI data set in terms of who has access to it. Um, but in the world of self-service analytics, in the world of you know building lake houses for people, we kind of have that. We have this managed reporting ecosystem. We can mark this data set as certified and centrally managed, and decide who has access to it and manage that through Active Directory and all that kind of stuff if we're in Azure. There's loads and loads of really, really useful things we can do. Again, assuming you have Power BI. If you don't have Power BI, if you don't have that central, uh, you know, kind of semantic layer management system, absolutely. Doing it separately, having a connector makes entire sense. Just all I'm saying, it's not the first time we've been able to do this. We've been able to do this for a while. However, I will absolutely say, however, there are limitations with this approach. When we go into our data set and I'm going to say, okay, I want to, I want to get this data set to work properly. I can only refresh it daily. You know, so I can go and enter my credentials. I can get this set up. I can give it kind of my bearer token again and get that working. You know, so I do need to go and manage that, have that kind of centrally in there. But then when I set up my schedule refresh, I can say, yes, I want to refresh it and I can refresh it daily or weekly. I can change this around. And, you know, if I was using premium, I'd be having it, you know, refresh throughout the day, but it's still a scheduled refresh. Uh, and I was having a play say, well, actually, could we not just make this direct query? So anytime someone queries it, we go back and the answer is no. So direct query is not available for the Delta sharing data set when we are inside of Power BI. So I can't have this to be always real time up to date. I'm managing a central refresh schedule. Then anyone who opens Excel just hits refresh and it gets the most recent data that I've published. But that means I've got two published schedules. I've got my, whoever's managing the actual Delta share, whichever vendor or third party or person in the organization is managing that. I've got their refresh schedule. And then there's another slightly delayed refresh schedule of whoever's managing my Power BI data set about how often I do run this import. Now, I can just ad hoc hit refresh. I can just go in there and go, can we get an update? Yeah, sure, update. That's refreshed for all users. But again, that's, that's a manual intervention. We don't necessarily want that as part of our process. So absolutely, there are limitations here. Um, but there's also a lot of power here. We can put a lot of DAX in there. We can have some calculations. We can have some things pre-built. We can build a Power BI app that has a load of richness and pre-built reports based on data sharing with relationships and all that interesting stuff already configured and then share that out for people. So people can connect to the data model and do their own analysis or connect some pre-canned reports off the same data with the same measures. And that is powerful. 
that has lots and lots of stuff in there. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to share today. All I wanted to look into. So I can't show you the 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 actual custom uh, connector into Excel because I don't have access to it because it's a limited uh, preview currently. And also, it's a third party, and I wouldn't necessarily say, yeah, go on, install third parties on all your uh, users. But I can show you Pavia. I can show you how to manage central data sets. Hopefully, that tickles you in terms of some things you can do with Excel, some things you can do with Excel and de uh, Delta sharing to bring those two things together. I mean, absolutely, Microsoft, if you're listening, can't you just add it to your get data options inside Excel? That would be very, very useful. I'm sure lots of people would love it. But until that actually happens, then loads and loads of different ways to skin that cat. Loads of different ways to get to Delta sharing and bring it into Power BI and actually have those things working. So, yeah. What would you use it for? I mean, loads of things. Whether it's using things like reference data and just making that available throughout your organization without having to worry about networking and management and stuff. About sharing, you know, data as a product. Uh, building it out and building it as a subscription and giving people access to certain things. Uh, publishing out the results of your experimentations, the results of your, um, you know, kind of your scientific research, making that available to people. And obviously loads and loads of financial services, things in terms of sharing market data, sharing trading data. You know, someone's subscribed to your kind of, you know, investment insights, and then you give them access to a data set and you're using Delta sharing to manage how long that lasts and when their credentials expires and who currently has access to what bits of data. You can do all of that through Delta sharing. Very, very interesting in terms of use case and how it all fits together. More a case of just how people connect to it. And how we get started with it, where we have a growing number of options. Yeah, interesting. Anyway, that is me for now. So as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know how you're getting on with Excel, Delta sharing, what use cases you'd want to use it for. And yeah, what you'd like to see, where you'd like to see it going. It's always interesting. Until next time, cheers.